Um, today we have two special guests and we'll also have a third special guest midway through. But uh, these are both of my brothers, Josh and Joe, and then we'll have our amazing sister-in-law, Patricia, joining later as well. So do you guys want to just give a little bit of an introduction, uh, share a little bit about yourself? We'll start with you, Joe. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Joe. Currently play on the same team as Jeremy for the new Taipei King. He's also a Dior ambassador. No. <laughs> He's wearing a Dior scarf and a Dior uh, sweatshirt. So, something um, like, something like, something Dior, like. Dior, we are going to. Can we get some type of? You guys just signed Jay Chow recently, so Joe <laughs> should definitely be next in line. Gaga, do you want to give you an intro? Sure. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Josh. I'm the oldest brother of the Lin clan, pediatric dentist by trade. That's what I do, and that's about it. Yeah, he uh, he's not as much. He's not as used to kind of podcast in the limelight so um we really appreciate him coming out um he's uh sweating pretty hard right now if you can't <laughs> tell <laughs> pretty nervous but we're gonna have a great conversation uh all right so we're all here good go why are we here uh we are currently in taipei but why are we all together right now it's very rare for us to be able to do this yeah yeah this is pretty rare uh we're all here obviously because you guys are both here and mom and dad are here and you guys are on the same team and also my kids have winter break so it's kind of the perfect storm where everything matches up where we can all get together at the same place at the same time and just celebrate the holidays it's been been a while since we've been, been able to do this so it's when was last time special. you it's been so long i can't even remember Seven, it's got to be years. close to a decade 10 years yeah yeah probably seven seven Seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> <laughs> she says 10 you say seven no, well, no, no, no. it was like seven it's like seven it was like my well, second or third year in Taiwan that you guys Oh, all yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But not okay. everybody was here. Uh, was everybody here? Mom and dad were here. Me and Gago, we were both we at the were game. We both here. So Patricia. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Actually, yeah. Too. So seven years. Seven years. <laughs> so officially, officially seven years. Uh, Joe, one. Gaga, zero. Um, and uh, yeah, we're celebrating the holidays. So we had a, a fun couple of days with Christmas and whatnot. Um, how did the gift exchange, were you happy with the gifts that you received? What'd you give? I mean, just, you know, fill everybody in on kind of how our Christmas party went. Yeah. I mean, gifts are always good. We have some very good gift givers in the family. Um, Who's the best? Uh, you can choose yourself if you feel like it's yourself. I think Wei is probably maybe the most thoughtful gift you? giver. <laughs> <laughs> just goes to the most expensive mall and just buys whatever on the display. Hold on, hold on. It is, are it you is, kidding me? Well, it is very thought out, but they are very expensive. Yes. And I say some of the gifts are probably ahead of the time or ahead of, we're not ready for it yet, but we don't know. For example, the, what's the kid's yes. coat? Yes, uh, I got them a Fear of God season one <laughs> denim <laughs> trench coat that they have worn maybe one time. And this was probably like nine years ago. <laughs> no, no, since, since then I've worn it. Oh. <laughs> since then I've worn it a few times. And, okay. and every time I'm like, oh, I should wear this more. And You like it now? Do you like it uh, now more than when you first got it. Yeah, I'm definitely more ready for it now. I wasn't really, I couldn't pull it off then. I can't pull it off now, but now it's at least more, I don't know, when I wear it out, all, all my friends are like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> like that's that's fashionable and stuff like that. Hey, well that's that's better than Jeremy. He, that means you wear it more than him. I wore it when? once <laughs> in the house. <laughs> and then I looked in the mirror and I said, I'll never wear it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, this is a hilarious. Joe got us, uh, he almost emptied out his bank account at the time. It was my first year in Taiwan, so it was my first time making rookie money. Year. Yeah, it was rookie and, year. And yeah, so I got all three of us that jacket. So I guess the question that I would ask is if it's so ahead of the time that the people receiving the gift don't even understand <laughs> it, is he still the best gift giver? I think it's good because the gift almost pushes you further than you're kind of ready for, accelerates your fashion game or whatever. So I don't know, it's thoughtful if it's pulled off correctly, if you mm -hmm. know they're going to grow into it in the future. Um, yeah, I mean, I will say every time I've worn out, people are very impressed. People actually have borrowed it to like wear for photo shoots and stuff like that as well. Wow. So nice. I mean, it's, it's got some good use. Oh, well, you just don't give a crap about all the nice whiskeys I bought you. <laughs> <laughs> so those are good as well. <laughs> those, are, those are good. They're uh, just very much appreciated. They're just second tier. It's cool they don't plan. push him 
They don't push his boundaries as Oh, much. they push his boundaries. They push his boundaries for sure because the price limit pushes the bound. The, the, the price I'm spending on them definitely pushes our comfort zone for sure. But no, that's cool. I'll just buy you a trench coat next time. I'll just, I'll just buy a denim trench coat. I mean, all, all very good gifts. Can't really go wrong. <laughs> now he's it's trying to a, backtrack. It's, very, it's, it's cool. <laughs> you, your point was made. Um, I mean, I'm not bitter or anything, but uh, no, nah, just kidding. Uh, no, Joe is a tremendous gift giver. Um, what did you get from him this year? I actually don't even know. I got, I mean, I got a sweatpants. I don't know the brand. So it's no. something that's pretty foreign to me. Yeah, I got, got, I got, me? yeah, you got yeah. a stomp. Oh, <laughs> Thom- you got a, st- Thomas, he got a, st- <laughs> <laughs> you got a stomp brown, which is oh like, oh my gosh. It's kind of like the Adidas. Before you get three hated strikes on by them. all of your fans, he's joking. I'm joking. <laughs> It's Tom Brown. It's Tom Brown. <laughs> it's like Adidas, but then they added an extra stripe. So it's four stripes. Um, just so if you ever see the four stripes, it is um, it is not Thom. It's Tom. Even though it's T-H-O-M, it's, it's pronounced Tom. Um, yeah. Uh, did you, do, you get, do you guys think that is more out of your comfort zone for fashion? Or do you think it's... it's just compared to... Well, no, co- just where you are right now. Not compared to comfort. Oh. Like, would you wear, is that something you would wear, like, often? Or is like, oh, I think it's a little bit too loud, or you think it's too, a little bit too, like, high-end? I, I think it would make my regular rotation. I think I just get very nervous mm. wearing something. I don't even know how much it costs, but I know it costs a lot. So that in itself, and I have young kids, and mm-hmm. pr- I promise <laughs> every time I wear something nice, <laughs> within, like, five or ten minutes, one of my kids will come up with, with an oily hand or like just like grabbed a Tony Bing or something and ate it and then like wipe it all over me for no reason. That, that, so that, that. it's just anything like nice just makes me very nervous. <laughs> Which then brings me to a funny story is we're literally sitting there during Christmas dinner and oh. we don't know. We haven't opened our gifts yet. So Joe got both of us thumb. But Joe is also head to toe thumbed out. Right. So he's head to toe thumbed out. And my wife is sitting next to me and she opens a pack of hot sauce but the the sauce just squirts everywhere and it goes onto both of his thumb pieces (laughs) as well as it hit three articles of clothing and joe literally is like sighing it's just like like jaw drop well like like, i tried not to be too crazy about it yeah it wasn't like it's like like, i saw it and i was just like (laughs) 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 well first of all i didn't know so i was just like i didn't know it spilled yet and then i was just looking around and then i saw the red (laughs) i saw the bright red on my on my sweatpants i was like oh no i mean it's all good (laughs) but your internal but but your wife was like oh shoot i don't know i'll wash this right away i was like no i mean we'll just just throw in the wash real quick it'll be it'll be fine (laughs) and so for the next 15 minutes joe goes into my room uh switches into my clothes and then uh, and then my wife is is so nervous because you know, uh, same thing. We don't know how much it costs, but we know it, it's we know it's a grip. And so she's outside, just like hand washing and trying to get everything right. Then she takes the the hair dryer and she's hair drying it and and you know, ironing it and everything. Um, it was hilarious. Tom Brown, Dior, um, we're, Joe's open to partnerships for <laughs> for either of you guys. So, um, but he reps your clothing. Um, but yeah, what other gifts we're we're giving out? Mine from both of you guys were all clothes. Um, I believe they were all, oh, all but one was Fear of God Essentials, and then the other one was Russell Westbrook's brand, Honor the Gift, Um, because you guys know I love fashion and clothes a lot, so I definitely appreciated those. Um, I would definitely wear them, for sure. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, we had a great time giving gifts. Uh, Joe gave my dad a, a beautiful Mont Blanc pen that my dad thought was just a <laughs> normal ballpoint pen. Uh, that's another story for another day. Um, but yeah, we wanted to kind of go past the holiday season and kind of get into family dynamics. Um, you know, obviously, everybody on social media and a lot of people who know us, um, they talk about us three being abnormally close, um, you know, and. I think people have always described us as like, oh, they're a very, very close family. Can you guys kind of talk about, you know, let's start with Gaga, Josh. Um, People still think it's funny that I call him Gaga, which means older brother in Chinese, but it's just literally I called him my whole life, so I'm not really going to start calling something different. But kind of. Well, you tried it for a little bit. I tried and it didn't stick. You tried for a little bit too. What? Just to switch up. Yeah, yeah. 
I still say Josh every Josh night. or like Oh, I, I text when I like I text I'll, I'll text Zas. Uh, well, yeah, but, but that but was I tried, like <laughs> I tried to call you something besides Gaga for a little bit. And it just didn't sit right. Yeah. Uh, it's always like he'll always be like Gaga, like older brothers, like Josh is too like formal, you know. It's like Josh, Joshua, Josh, <laughs> you know. Like I tried calling, so I called Joe. I call him Wei. His Chinese name is Ling Su Wei, and so it's Wei Wei, and it's a very cute name, and it's like for like little kids, and you call him Wei Wei. Um, but I tried calling him other name like Joe or Joseph, and it just doesn't work either. So I mean, he get you got a couple of my teammates calling me Wei Wei now. <laughs> Kai, I I heard Kyan like scream it on the court. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it was like it was like I did. It was like an ISO play, and then I turned into like a right hand jumper floater, and then and then he and then he says, "I'm like yeah, Wei Wei," <laughs> but because his voice is so like sometimes it's so sharp, yeah. and he like screams it. So it was like I heard it over like everything. I was like. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, you know, people think are starting to, like, they say it almost if, it, like, I'm their brother, too. Yeah. It's like, Wei Wei. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. So that's Wei Wei. That's Gaga. Um, and then classic middle child, they just call me Jeremy. They just didn't have any time. They just had, they didn't care. And no time, no effort, no anything into my name. It's just like, oh, whatever it says on the birth certificate, Jeremy, sure. Uh, okay, so we'll start with you, Gaga. Um, I mean... You know, uh, well, wait, maybe you want to take this away. What was it like growing up with Gaga? I don't remember getting into any, like, quarrels or fights with Gaga, to be honest. Mm-hmm. We've, spoken, we've spoken about this before. Usually he's, he backs me up and, and fights you <laughs> to protect me. And then I'm like, yeah, like, he has my back. <laughs> but I, I, I honestly don't remember, like, ever, like, having big fights with Gaga. Um, so yeah, I would say he growing up he was he was a pretty perfect older brother. Um, he wanted he he wanted us to be around all the time. So anything, anytime we hung out or he, he played games. To be around all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a great older brother. Like he always wanted us. Like all three of us were always together. So a lot of times when we were younger, we would watch him play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, whatever RPG game he would play. Yeah. Um, but we just. I don't know. We just wanted to be around him. Um, that's what I would remember the most. I agree with that. I mean, uh, what do you think about that, Giga? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we got lucky. Three boys, and we were kind of all into the same things. So the, it was kind of a natural, almost kind of hanging out kind of thing. We all like basketball, all like video games. And yeah, I mean, it just kind of happened that way. And I think we got pretty lucky. But yeah, we grew up super close. Um, for the most part, we didn't really fight too much in general. I think there's just a few phases where, you know, it was a little bit rougher. But overall, it's good times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we'll actually use this when the podcast comes out, but we also did have a common enemy, and that brought us a lot closer to. Um, I love you, Mom, but you were a common enemy, number one. Um, and so, you know, anytime we were upset at you, it brought us closer together. I think that might have been her strategy, to be honest. I, would, I wouldn't put that past her. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, yeah. No, I, I always say Josh is uh, Guga, but Josh Lin is, I was definitely perfect older brother, taught me what it meant, what it was like to be a man, but I would say that everyone always saw him as this like prodigy, perfect child, but he is one of the most naughty, but in a subtle way, and like, He's just not the perfect child that everybody thought he was. He was so bratty, but he just never got caught. Would you agree with that? Me? I don't think so. I mean, I, I think I agree with parts of that. If you were going to say, like, maybe mischievous. Mischievous, that's the right word. That's, that's probably a better, a, better word. Word. That's a better word. Bratty, I would say that's probably the wrong word to use. Um, I think I did like mischief. I didn't really love following the rules, but I would never take it past the point of like, I would never take it to the point of like maybe maliciousness or like damaging or actually hurting somebody for real. It would just be like stupid small things to make life easier or to be funny or like to inconvenience somebody in a funny way, but not in a way that actually would be hurtful. Yeah. So, uh, one, you know, story is, uh, you know, every growing up, I just did everything that he did. Um, and I wanted to be like him. 
So one day he taught me how to uh, flip people off. And, uh, <laughs> this was, okay. he <laughs> and he didn't know what it meant, right? He didn't know what it meant. He was just like, I think it's like something bad or something or whatever. But he was just teaching me. He's like, okay, you just take your middle finger. You do this and whatever. So, you know, I did it to my parents. I kept flipping them off when they weren't looking. And so anytime my parents would walk down the hallway, I'd just be behind them. And I'd be like, oh, like, you know, I'm going to use my fourth finger now. But I was like, oh, right. And then uh, I went to school. And I did the same thing. Uh, I started flipping people off because I didn't know what it meant. He didn't know what it meant. And um, and I got in trouble in school. Uh, same thing. One day, I, you know, I came home. I was like, uh, you know, where's whatever? He's like, I don't know. Up your button around the corner. And I just thought it was so funny. I went to school. And I just, you know, whenever someone would ask me, teacher, somebody, they asked me, what is it? Where is this? I'd say, up your button around the corner. Of course, I got in trouble. Um, but those are kind of some of the mischievous things that, uh, you know, again, he wasn't trying to be malicious, but it was just hilarious how much... I wanted to just copy and be my older brother. And so I pretty much did everything you did. I just always took it too far and got in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you have to deal with tact. <laughs> there, you, there it is. Which, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you could have used a little bit of growth in that department. But <laughs> it's also very condescending. Um, that, that's a trademark of his. <laughs> what was it like uh, with Joe as the youngest? How would you describe Boy growing up? Uh, I'd say if you were kind of the life of the party, I think I would describe Weiwei as being maybe the joy of the party. Um, Weiwei is always like, you know, younger by a lot, like very cute, very happy. Um, so he just brought a very kind of joyful, childlike, innocent dynamic to the family. And I distinctly remember a shift in the family dynamic. Maybe not like right when you were born, but soon after. Like there's just a lightness and a joy that you always operated with that just kind of made everybody happy and it kind of makes everybody want to make you happy as well. Um, so it's just, yeah, it was just always a very light, pleasant feel with way, way around. Um, so I think we ended up spoiling you a lot, uh, maybe unintentionally, but just because everybody loved you so much, you know, like we'd always do stuff for you or like maybe tell you the answers to whatever you're struggling with or whatever that looks like, but everyone kind of wanted to take care of you. Yeah, I would say you're pretty much the perfect little brother. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I mean, up until a certain point, like once you got to high school, it was just like you were, oh God, it was a headache. But I'm saying growing up, up until middle school, I would say you're the perfect little brother. I would say Gaga was the perfect older brother. Um, I, I literally, yeah, I, I just was born into an amazing family. Um, but I agree with Giga. I mean, you wanted to, you wanted everyone to be so happy that uh, you would call people out when they weren't happy. Uh, do you want to kind of share about how, you know, when I, uh, you know, I would, I would kind of cry before school and suck my thumb and. and <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually remember this moment, but like people have talked about it a number of times where I guess like I kind of have to, or I guess I, I did it. Um, yeah, you are you are four years older than me, and I guess you cried a lot and sucked your thumb a lot, <laughs> and I guess I couldn't take it anymore, <laughs> and I was maybe, what, like six? <laughs> so I looked at you one morning, I was like, why do you cry and suck your thumb? <laughs> like, all the time, every morning, and then I guess he kind of he took it really hard <laughs> and never did it again. <laughs> I mean, I'm 10 years old, so I've been going to school for five years, and I'm crying before every single day of school for five straight years, every day. You? And mom and dad, nobody could get me to stop. <laughs> and then one day you just looked at me, and you're like, why do you cry before school every single day? Just stop crying. And that was the last day I ever cried before school. Well, kudos to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, me as... The middle child, uh, you know, there's always a reputation about the middle child, chip on your shoulder, uh, you know, not mature enough to be the oldest child, uh, not cute enough or, or, you know, to be spoiled like the youngest child, just kind of neglected. Would you guys feel like that's fair? Um, I have my own thoughts on it, but I, you know, definitely defer to you guys first. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. Um, I think, I don't think you were neglected. I think there's a lot of attention paid on you or put on you um but kind of like we said earlier i did i do think you're kind of like maybe the, the the life of the party or the life of the family dynamic um you always a distinct memory of mine is like waking up weekend mornings this is maybe when i was in middle school high school you, that's the period where you start to sleep in a little bit more and my not my alarm clock but you know how like some people they wake up to the weekend it's like oh fresh cooked eggs like 
the smell is coming through the window, and that's when I know, oh, it's, it's a beautiful day, it's going to be a beautiful morning. And, and this is going to sound bad, but I don't mean it, mean it in a bad way, but my, the egg smell thing for me was like you and mom kind of arguing about something or fighting about something, and I was like, ah, oh, that's how I know I'm home, or like that's how, you know, that was, that was just the weekend smell, the weekend noise that I was accustomed to, and I guess you and mom always have something to say, you're always like, talking about something, whereas maybe me and Wei are often a little bit more reserved. So I'm always a little bit in awe, like, man, how can you always have something to talk about? Or how do you always have something to say? And I mean that in the best possible way, um, because that was definitely necessary for our, our family dynamic. But kind of going beyond that, you know, you, by nature, you're just very, very headstrong. You're very loyal. You're very, like, able to push the boundaries. And as an older child, for me, I was like, very sensitive, very shy, very, like, quiet kind of as a oldest immigrant child or oldest child of immigrants you're kind of like everything's new your parents don't know what's going on so like in school or in extracurriculars you're just kind of figuring everything out and in a lot of ways you kind of kind of like what ways gifts push our fashion sense you kind of pushed my growth as a person in some ways as well kind of watching you be headstrong or like not taking you know abuse or whatever it is from school or whatever like that actually gave me a lot of bravery or courage or just watching that made me grow a lot as a person. So I think you were also a great middle child, great younger brother, and actually helped me in a lot of ways as well. I appreciate um, that. Um, do you remember uh, telling mom or asking mom if I could uh, go back into her womb? I don't because I think that was when you just came out. Um, I was five or younger. I mean, I can't speak to this. I've only heard stories that you're a horrible baby. I'm <laughs> always screaming and crying and stuff like that. Wait, but I actually, said this. Yeah, you're, you're I, I said I was like a three or four year old. Can you put back in your womb? <laughs> I think a lot of I think a lot of first children feel that way when the second one comes true. out. You know, you lose out a lot of attention. Your parents don't pay yeah, attention yeah, to you anymore. Yeah. So. Very normal. It doesn't say anything about you as a person. I'm totally joking. I'm to I just think it's a hilarious story because mom loves to tell that one. Obviously, yeah. I don't remember it either. Um, wait, did you have anything else? I mean, we've spoken about it on what it was like growing up with you on, on, on the other previous podcast. podcasts. Um, yeah, I wouldn't remember as much because Gaga was older than you. Yeah. So when I came out, you were already four, and then, like, say I'm four, you're already eight, but I'm not, I don't remember much from, like, you know, when yeah. I'm that young. Oh, yeah, and kind of going off that, too, like, you were also, like, you're a great hype man, which, <laughs> <laughs> as an older sibling, like, that's perfect. Like, maybe you see it as, like, I'm always copying or whatever, but I'm seeing it as, like, oh, man, he just wants to be like me, he always wants to be around <laughs> me, I always have someone to play with, like, when we play video games, like, I could just play, and he's, like, you're very happy to watch. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is it was very good. You're a very good younger brother. <laughs> yeah, we got lucky. I mean, because, you know, there's always a saying where, like, when you get in conflict, there's, like, a rhino or a hedgehog. Rhinos charge forward, and they confront people, and they fight with people, and then hedgehogs, they'll, like, go underground, and they'll just, like, go off to the side and just, like, not want to deal with conflict. And we had a different mix between us. Um, they're both more hedgehogs. And I'm more rhino, so I was always, you know, my mother is a rhino as well, so we were always fighting, and then they would always kind of just, like, back off to the side and let us calm down. Um, but in many of the personalities, it kind of ended up mixing and matching. We're not all the same. We're not even close to the same in personality. But in terms of what the family needed, you know, we were able to kind of have a little bit of everything. Um, and now, actually, I would say that you are the most extroverted and social of us three. Um, uh, I would say that you're the most social and I'm the least social, but I think growing up, it might have been flipped. And Joe's kind of I always was in the middle. super social growing up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I true. was extremely social. So you were probably the most social growing up? Uh, would you say that? The most extrovert? both were up there. I was up there. Yeah. I'm just saying, I was, I was really social. Like, yeah. I, would, I would get in trouble at school. I had to sit by myself because I would just talk too much in class. <laughs> like... Multiple times, like the teacher would have to literally pick my desk up and just move me to a corner so I could just have to be by myself. So this was this was him as a, too much. him as a student was that him as a student was setting records and winning math awards and doing stuff that was never been that had never been done. You know, like at Kings or other places, they choose to win, you know, like he got his plaque right when you walk in to the school. His plaque is right there. And then I was the one who was like making fun of the teachers and getting kicked out of class, which I continued to do all the way until high school. And I, making them cry. And making you, them cry. 
You've made more than more than one teacher cry. I've definitely made more than one. I've made every Sunday school teacher cry, and I made my high school <laughs> teacher cry. I've made my I've made a lot of teachers cry. Um, I was a horrible, uh, horrible student. Like if you didn't know what you're talking about, I was I would be sure to let you know in front of everybody. I, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I have a hard time imagining like what could make a high school teacher cry. I regret it to this day. It seriously, it feels I, I feel so bad. Um, but it was like the 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 class after lunch, the class after lunch, um, I'm always in a bad mood because I don't want to be there. I just ate lunch and I want to keep eating lunch. <laughs> it's, it's pretty <laughs> on brand. <laughs> it's on brand, yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, growing up, my mom always says, like, you know, I, I literally eat two or three times as much as both of my brothers, which is actually factual. Um, so I love eating. I hated going to class. And then, like, one day, I was, I was getting on her nerves. It was, it was, it was continual. But then one day... Um, she wrote something on the board, she spelled it wrong, and then I thought I whispered, but I have a loud voice, um, and so the whole class heard me, but I was like, man, she's trying to teach us how to spell? And then like a few people started snickering next to me, and then she was on the other side, she heard it, and apparently she started crying, and uh, it just like, I didn't realize that my words could have that effect, um, but yeah, uh, this was like literally. I was in high school, still doing this and having this bad behavior, and uh, it's you know I regret it to this day. Um, yeah, uh, so I, t- <laughs> I just got really sad. <laughs> uh, we gotta we gotta lighten up the mood. We gotta we gotta get things back in a positive direction. So uh, no better way to do that than to uh, introduce you all to Josh's wife, um, our sister-in-law, Patricia's son. Um, she had a golden opportunity uh, upon marrying Josh to uh, change her last name to Lynn, but she wanted nothing to do with Lynn. She is Patricia's son. Um, and uh, Patricia, do you want to join us? <laughs> <laughs>